All right, good morning, everybody. So we are pre-Pesach, and um, the Parsha today is actually Mitzora. Last week it was Tazria, but I assumed it was combined Tazria and Mitzora because usually they're always read together except in a leap year, and this is a leap year. So they're actually read separately. So this year, this week is, is Mitzora, and you know, the main rabbinic interpretation and commentary, which I'm sure isn't new to you guys, you've heard about why these skin eruptions and these eruptions on the house and what does that even mean and leprosy. And so there's a rabbinic interpretation that somehow it's connected to Lashon Hara, which is a misuse of our power of speech, right? Saying things that are harmful, hurtful, deceitful, untrue, um, or not speaking up when we should for justice, for what's right. It's like, how do we use in Buddhism, it's one of the eightfold path actually, right speech. That that is one of the core moral, you know, essences of being a good human being is to have an awareness and a discernment around how we use our power of speech and words. Are we using them for good or are we using them for harm? So the opposite of Lashon Hara, which is literally translates as like an evil tongue, <laughs> is Lashon HaKodesh, which is a holy tongue. And do we use our speech for holiness? What's the, what's the offering and the possibility of how we use our words to heal, to encourage, to express love and praise that is genuine. Um, so what does this have to do with Pesach? The word Pesach literally, oh, Dina's smiling. She's so excited. I can see that she likes this, the way this teaching is going. The word Pe means mouth. And the letter Pe literally looks like a mouth. If you look like it, it the letter, it looks, this is what it looks like. And it looks like the opening of a mouth, you know? And the word sach literally means to say or to speak. So the word pesach, which is the word for Passover, pesach literally means to open your mouth to speak. Or the way the mouth is used to say or speak something. Pesach also means offering. So one of the right? It's, it's Chag HaPesach, which is the holiday of an offering or a sacrifice or like, what are we giving? And so the question is like, how are our words an offering in the world? And what are we offering, right? Are we offering positivity, negativity? So we're going to do a practice today that works with the throat chakra because the throat is that channel through which breath comes to form speech and words right? And the throat from um, a yogic perspective, from the chakras, it's the, the throat is the fifth chakra, okay? And it lies right between the heart and the mind, right? So it's this, it's this channel. How do I use my words not only to express my thoughts, but also to infuse whatever that is with love, with compassion, with caring for another human being, with empathy. So it is that channel. And Kabbalistically, there isn't actually a spira for the throat. However, you will see sometimes on an Eitz Chaim diagram of the spirot that it's dotted in as a circle. Instead of a solid circle spira, it's sort of that 11th unspoken, huh, pun not intended, unspoken spira. But the 11th spira is at the throat and it's called da'at, which da'at means knowing or knowledge. And in the Torah, the word da'at is used for intimacy. When a husband and wife come together in union, in intimacy, it's called knowing. To really truly know another person, to know God, to know yourself, there's some intimacy that's created through our words, right? So we're going to do like a throat chakra. I just have a question before we start. Does anybody have any thyroid problems or you, you don't have to answer this <laughs> just for you to be aware of. Um, so the thyroid gland and the parathyroid glands are located in the throat. 
And this definitely is more of an issue for women and postmenopausally than for men. But we start to have like an underactive or an overactive thyroid. The thyroid controls hormone secretion, which affects our weight, our sleep, our temperature regulation, our you know muscular body mass, all of that stuff. So it's definitely, this is going to be a healing practice actually to bring energy to the thyroid and the parathyroid. Um, but if you have any cervical issues, just modify as you need, right? If you know you have throat or neck issues, that doesn't feel right in the practice, just modify. Okay, are we all good? All right, so we're going to start with actually just some neck exercises, all right? And then we're gonna do a breathing practice. So very simply, you're gonna, and really slow with a lot of mindfulness, you're gonna just turn your head over your shoulder and then bring your head back to center. And you can do this with the breath. So you would exhale, look over the shoulder, inhale back to the center. Okay, let's just do that a few more times. You can close your eyes here. You're exhaling and inhaling. You may notice that in addition to just stretching the muscles around the neck, there are muscles involved in the jaw and the face. But more than that, you might notice that your core muscles, your abdominals are actually engaged and working this motion. And you might wanna make your breath just deep enough that you can hear it subtly and feel that exhale, that inhale. All right, the next time you come to center, we're gonna change the direction of this. So on, you're gonna, again, the inhale will be center. So you'll exhale, tuck the chin down to the chest. So you're contracting the throat and stretching the back of the cervical spine. On your inhale, come up through the center. And on your exhale, you're tipping the head back and stretching the throat. And exhale, center. And close your eyes and do some of these really slowly. So the breath could be very relaxed and long. And notice what shows up for you in this range of motion. Does it bring up any fear or attention or memory, emotion? Especially opening the throat feels quite vulnerable. Right? Closing the throat off so tightly can feel claustrophobic. Right? How does that relate to our freedom around speech, our experiences around what we say, what we don't say? Good. And then when you come up through the center, just close your eyes, rest for a moment, breathe naturally, normally. And with your eyes closed, see if you could just visualize the breath going in and out through that throat channel as you're breathing. All right, I'm gonna ask you to do a breath retention with what's called Jalandhara Bandha, which is a throat lock. So let me explain what that is. In yoga, there's an understanding that when you intentionally bring an energy of like containment to the throat, that there's a, that that's first of all, on a healing level, very healthy because of the hormone that, you know, the endocrine glands that are here. But also that there's, 
again, a mindfulness being brought to how we use this power. So what the throat lock looks like is either a closing off by tucking the chin or a closing off by sort of drawing the neck backwards. <laughs> like what animal does this? I feel like, wait, uh, you know how some animals kind of do this? Almost like you could see like pigeons when they walk, which is, oh, that's in our Parsha today. The pigeons and the turtle doves, right? And that kind of like, you know, like the chickens and the turkeys, like fowl do this. So do this for a second. See how that feels. To kind of like, yeah, it's very funny looking. Yeah. But what is that about? And it, it's like, you might even feel this in your ears and your neck. Like this is working your muscles, right? It's actually a lot of muscular energy to do this. And we don't really use these muscles in these ways. We use our muscles like on our phone and on our computer and driving, like just in one locked position. But to have like a range of motion around the throat is interesting. Yeah. Okay. So here's what John Darabanda we're going to do breath practice. 10 times because 10 is a good number. You know, Jewish, good Jewish number. We're going to inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, which we don't usually do in yoga, but you're going to take a big breath in through the nose. And when you breathe in, I want you to feel like your ribs are expanding, your lungs are expanding, you're elevating through the, so you're going to, it's going to look like this. You'll count it off for yourself 10 times. At the end of the 10th time, after you exhale, you're going to hold the breath out. You're going to finish with your exhale, let the breath out, and then do a throat lock, either by tucking the chin down or by pulling the throat back. But you're creating like this kind of feeling of I'm closing off. And as you do that, you're going to notice the lungs and the chest are lifting up to the throat. So this feeling of the heart, the chest coming to the throat closing off, hold it for as long as you're comfortable. When it feels like not so comfortable, let the breath go. I mean, well, the breath is already out, so sorry. When you're no longer comfortable, take a deep breath in and then re-engage the lock and hold the breath in and then let it all go, okay? So I'll guide you through that. Um, but it's distracting if I'm breathing, so mm, I'm not gonna do the like heavy breathing with you like you do your own so I don't distract you, but it's, well, I'll start with you. So. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Really fill, lift the chest. Exhale all the way out. Make the exhale loud with your mouth. Open up and let it out. Good. Take two or three more rounds. Big breath in. Let it all the way out. And then engage the throat lock and hold. Draw your attention to the throat. Contain contain, contain. And inhale, hold again, lift your chest, your shoulders up to the throat, contain the throat. And exhale it out. And just close your eyes and notice whatever is happening your throat, in your head, in your heart. And set an intention for your practice, an offering, a Pesach offering. Where or with whom do I want to abstain more? from speaking or saying certain things. Maybe it's the nagging, maybe it's the reactivity, maybe it's the repeating the same complaints over and over or undermining or where do I wanna refrain?
and then setting an offering for Lashon HaKodesh, this holy speech, with whom in my life do I want to be more expressive of love and compassion and support? And you can bring your hands over your throat. So taking the palms and kind of cradling the throat for a moment. Almost like sealing that intention, that offering. All right, and as you're ready, we'll come on to hands and knees. You can take a blanket under your knees if you'd like, if that helps you. Actually, I'm gonna turn my mat this way for purposes of this exercise. And we're gonna go into some um, cat cows, but also take them through some child pose. So in our cat cow, we usually focus on, you know, the tailbone and the spine curving, and that's fine. But in today's cat cow, I want you to really focus on what the throat is doing. So when you puff up the back and drop the tailbone, the chin comes to the chest. Notice that that is that Jalandara Bandha, that throat lock. So we're containing at the throat. And then as you inhale and drop the belly and arch the spine the other way, notice that you're stretching and opening up the throat channel. Good. So go through these motions a few times. Good. And then we're going to just change the um, motion a little bit. So on the inhale, you'll drop the belly. You'll lengthen through the throat. On the exhale, you curve the spine up into your cat, but you're also going to press your seat all the way back into a child's pose. The inhale draws you up. You kind of undulate through the spine. And then the exhale, you lead with the throat, the chin tucking back to the chest, pop up the back and sit it back down into the child's pose. So just coming through that little mini vinyasa between these two movements. Great. All right, the next time you come to your child's pose, you can hang out there for a moment in your child's pose. Yeah, just breathe. When you think about a child who's pre-verbal and can't express in words, but still expresses emotion, right, through nonverbal communication. That's another interesting aspect of this, like that we overemphasize speech and words and thinking, but how do you instead come a little bit when you close off the throat, how do you come into the heart? So even here in this pose, breathe into the back of the heart space. As you're inhaling, feel the heart space open. All right, from here, you're gonna come back onto the hands and knees and let's do a little bit of a core and balance exercise while we're here, okay? So you're gonna take your right leg back behind you, flex that foot, keep the hips at the same level as each other, try not to open up the hip and raise it. 
Okay, and then you are gonna take that left arm forward off the mat and just hold yourself here. Give a little drawing in of the belly, but try not to drop the foot back down. Good, find your balance. Find your balance, the core is drawing in. All right, and then three times, we're gonna pull the knee in towards the elbow and we're gonna tuck the throat again. So really the forehead is coming towards that knee. And then extend and lengthen through the throat as you lengthen the arm forward. Two more times. Squeeze it in and in and in. And extend forward. Squeeze it in. Ah, extend forward. And now you're going to bend that right foot up towards the ceiling. And you're going to reach around and try to find the foot, the toe, the ankle. Maybe if you can't do that, maybe you could find, well, my pants are too short, but if your pants are longer, you could grab your pants. If you have some connection there, push down into your right arm, kick the heel back enough that you're reaching a little bit of a lengthening through the chest, through that left shoulder, belly is drawing in, that's stabilizing you, lengthening through the core, and maybe you're opening the throat here as well. Good. Come back through the center and lower the knee down, tuck the toes. Let's take a down dog here. And just enjoy your down dog. Whatever feels good to you. So something I just learned this morning, anatomically, the muscles that are around the throat, all those throat and neck muscles that control throat opening and closing are called secondary respiratory muscles. So they actually assist the diaphragm and the rib cage and all the like rib intercostal muscles in breathing. So actually the throat is very much part of being able to fully inhale and exhale the breath from the lungs. So even as you're hanging out in your down dog now, See what your throat is doing. See what your neck is doing. Notice if your chin is like reaching towards the ground or if your chin is tucked into your chest. See what that does to your breath. And just breathe in your down dog and observe. All right, you're gonna slowly lower the knees back down to the ground. You can untuck the toes. We're gonna to take the cat-cow series on the other side. So first, lift that left leg straight back behind you. Find the belly drawing in, tailbone lengthens. You're not locking out the elbow. You're using your hands to be very strong and your arm muscles to be strong here. Take that right arm forward. Good, and three times, you squeeze it all in, hover up through the spine, chin comes to the chest, and extend and lengthen. Two more. And when you extend that leg left next time, you bend it up to the ceiling and you're reaching, reaching, reaching around. And that feeling that this uh, right side now of the chest, of the right lung has more space in it. And you breathe into that right lung. And maybe that also lets you feel spacious in the throat to extend, good. Can this pose be an offering to someone you love? How does that change your effort <laughs> and your attention in the pose if you thought, okay, the quality of my effort in this pose and my joy in this pose is actually an offering to this person who I love. All right, reach that. Back, come on into your down dog again. Ah, let's take a little twist in the down dog. So walk your hands a little closer towards your feet. And then you're gonna take that right hand off the mat, reach it across towards the left outer shin or the left ankle. And then you can bend the elbow so it draws that right side waist in a little more into that twist. And you can look under the left armpit. The tendency is for the hips to shift over the left. Try to resist that. Try to keep the hips lifting up and back behind you. Good. Feel that twist in the belly. Belly can draw in towards the spine. 
Let the crown of the head drop towards the ground. But notice we are twisting in the head and neck, so we're working those muscles through the shoulders as well, and the neck and throat. Good. Bring it back to the center. Take the other side. Smile. Again, try to pull the hips back into the center line. You can bend that left elbow to come in a little deeper. All right, take the hand forward. Walk your hands farther forward. Let's just do one more little thing before we stand. We're gonna just move between the down dog and plank. So you're gonna take your hips forward, shoulders over the wrist into a plank and then pull yourself back up into the down dog. As you come forward, the, the chin and the throat can open. As you come backwards, that chin can come back to the chest. It's funny how like this happens anyway, but we don't usually pay attention to it, right? And that's really what mindfulness is. Mindfulness is what are we choosing to give our attention to in, in, in any given moment? So in this practice, we're giving attention to the throat chakra and creating some energy and some kind of movement and strength and flushing out. All right, the next time you come to your plank, hold it. If you're feeling feisty this morning and you want a little bit more strength, feel free to take a push up or two or three or anything you want here. When you're done, you can come back to your down dog and then walk your feet towards the front of your mat and come up to stand. All right. <sighs> okay, let's do, um, you good? Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's do a little bit of just chest opening here. So take your arms out to the sides. You're just going to spin the shoulders forward one way and then back the other way. All right. Notice that closes off the upper lungs and rounds the back. This opens and lifts the lungs. It naturally lifts open the throat. Good. Do that a few times. Good. <clears throat> and then you're going to take your hands behind you, clasp the hands together. Yeah. And just reach those hands down the back. The elbows come towards each other. The triceps are reaching towards each other. Yeah. Just really open up the chest. Good. Now here, tuck your chin down to your chest <clears throat> to close off the throat. And then lift the head up to neutral. Good, now plant your feet strongly. Feel the legs strong, the pelvic floor is strong. So this isn't coming from arching the back. The back is really supported, low back. You're gonna, if you feel safe, you're gonna lift the chin up to the sky, open up the throat. Maybe the back of the skull is resting on those shoulders. Yeah. Good. And then you can bend the knees and let yourself fold over. Those arms can reach up off the low back. They're reaching towards the sky or reaching behind you. So even that act of reaching the, the hands behind you, it's like you're making more space. The shoulders are pulling away from the ears. A lot of space in the neck here. And you might want to just gently nod your head up and down, shake your head yes and no. Releasing the arms, let the fingertips come towards the floor. Just hang here in your ragdoll for a moment. And slowly roll back up to stand. When you get there, take the shoulders up and back and down a few times. Yeah, <laughs> I see taking off clothes happens after going upside down, right? It just heats your body up. Okay, all right. 
Let's do um, a little bit of a ballistic stretching just to loosen out through the shoulder muscles. So take your feet wider on your mat. Yeah, well, a little wider than hip distance. You can put a slight bend in the knee. And we're gonna do a little twisting, but letting kind of gravity and momentum pull you around in the twist. So this is really just a nice stretch into the shoulders. The neck is very relaxed, there's no strain. All right, and let's do a little bit of a breath of joy while we're here. So breath of joy is a three-part breath with a big forward fold. So it looks like an inhale this way to the side, inhale to the top, inhale. Oh, wait, did I do that wrong? Hold on, hold on. Yeah, oh, sorry, start at the set. So, so inhale, inhale like a conductor, inhale, big exhale, fold over, arm sweep overhead. And then inhale up, inhale out, inhale up. So it's a triple inhale. You're like hyper inflating your lungs. Yeah, good. Inhale, 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 exhale. And you may wanna try this with inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. And the next time you come up to stand, you can lower your hands over your heart, palms to your heart, close your eyes, just feel your heart beat. Your heart rate should be elevated from that. And reconnecting with whatever your kavana, your intention, your offering is about loving speech. All right, let's move through a little bit of a lunge series. So come towards the front of your mat. You can start with your hands at your heart. We'll inhale the arms up overhead. As you exhale, you're gonna fold down over the legs, drop the forehead, the crown of the head to the ground. So the chin is at the throat, you feel that? Inhale halfway up and lengthen your throat forward. Good, exhale, hands to the mat. Step your right leg all the way back. Come on up for a high lunge. Yeah, so lifting the chest up, lifting the throat if you're comfortable doing that. What does that feel like to like let the throat open in this pose? Maybe that feels a little scary. <laughs> Maybe that throws off your balance. So what does it feel like to close the throat off in the pose? All right, just, just play. If the throat is part of the breath and part of opening up the lungs, right? Opening up, it's like elevating the heart. It's actually what you do with your throat helps you elevate the intention of your heart in this pose. And this is a backbend pose. So usually a backbend also has a throat opener because it's drawing up. Good. All right, from here, let's come into a little twist again. I wasn't expecting to do twists as part of my practice today, but it works with the Passover theme, this whole ringing out. So, the twist, you're gonna take the right hand down to the floor, maybe a little wider than the shoulder. Front knee is bent deeply, right? Low, like reach that back leg back so you have space for that hip to open. And then you're opening this arm up to the sky. If that's too deep for you in your hips, you can also bring a block under, right? Under that palm, but you're working the twist here, okay? And again, see if you can do those little neck exercises, like look up towards, the, towards your fingers, but then gently and slowly, like we did at the beginning, drop your head and gaze down past your left shoulder to the right shoulder to the floor. Yeah. And then look up and look down. So what does it feel like 
So just keep a healthy range of motion in the neck. Good. Bring that left hand down to the ground, right hand down to the ground. Step back to a plank. Yep. From your plank, you can roll to one side, side plank balance. Strong arms, strong legs, strong belly lifting in and up. Good, come through the center, take a little push up if you want or not, and then roll over to the other side, side plank balance. Come back through the center, step your feet in a little closer, hips up high, heels down, downward facing dog. Let the back of the neck lengthen. Breathe. Set that right foot up to the front of the mat. Come on up for a lunge. You may need help doing that, it's okay. So you're gonna bend that knee deeply. Get a nice stretch here. Open the arms up to the sky. Yeah. Good. Again, that feeling of lifting and lengthening, elevating, and the throat, how that supports that. Good. All right, left hand will come to the floor or block. Yeah, widen your stance if you need. You're coming into that twist here. Good. And then you can play with the gentle range of motion in the neck. So looking up past those fingertips at the ceiling and then slowly turning your gaze down to the floor. I can actually feel this in my belly. Like it's interesting. Like the just the turn, you feel it too. You see, isn't that interesting? I don't think I've ever noticed that before. That a simple turn of the head actually engages your core muscles, your obliques. Really, really interesting fine tuning. All right, that hand can come to the ground. Step your back foot up. You're in your forward fold again. You can take opposite elbows and hang in a little deeper here. You want to take a little gentle, gentle bounce, just like decompressing the low back muscles. Good, from here, bring the hands to the tops of the thighs. You're just gonna lengthen halfway again and feel again a stretch in the neck. Shoulders pull back, yeah? Good, and then drop the head again, chin to chest. Good. Come all the way up to stand. Huh. Let's do an eagle pose. All right. You guys good? Where are we time-wise? We're doing all right. Okay. So you're going to take your right arm out in front of you. Yep. Bend your left elbow. Cross it over that right arm. Yeah. And then bend that bottom elbow. So both hands are to the sky and you're trying to Clasp the hands together. Find some connection there between the hands. Yep. Okay, let's just stay here. And you can take your feet a little wider than hip distance. All right, right here, all we're going to do is lift the elbows up. And then kind of, kind of like that cat-cow motion, draw the elbows in, chin to chest here. Yeah. Lift the elbows up. Lift the, the, the chin so the throat is opening and then fold the other direction. So we're just flossing through these neck and shoulder muscles. Good, then find yourself at neutral again. So the elbows are sort of parallel to the floor. Notice if your shoulders wanna be hiked up to your ears though. See if you can pull your shoulders down. Pull, like really like you have to kind of Press your own shoulders down. The elbows want to drop with it, but don't let that happen. Kind of relift the elbows, even though the shoulders are pulling down. And then try to get the hands away from your face. So you're just trying to keep that 90 degree. You'll feel this. <laughs> Anybody not feeling this? <laughs> There's no way to not feel this. Okay. And then you're just going to take some circles. Good. 
and circle the other way. Okay, now you can step your legs closer together. You're gonna lift the right foot up off the floor, cross it over the left thigh, and then drop your hips down and you're coming into an eagle balance. If you need to put that right foot, the toes onto the floor, you can put the toes to the floor or a block for balance. Yeah, otherwise they're floating. Good. And from here, maybe you let yourself fold forward again, dropping those elbows towards the knee, the hands towards the floor, the chin to the throat. And then lift it back up. Unwind the arms. Woohoo! I'm seeing a little like a nice little dancing there. Yeah, shake it out. Yeah. Why do you think they use birds for an offering in this Parsha? Uh -huh. You know, birds are about flight and it's all about air, right? Birds are associated with the air element. Air element is associated with breath, is associated with speech, with thought, with words, with communication. That's all air element when you go into astrology and other things. So interesting that the offering brought in Mitsura after you've healed from any kind of skin ailment or eruption is a bird. It's of the air that is what you're offering back for purity. All right, let's do that whole thing on the second side. Oh my gosh, that was hard. <laughs> All right, left arm extends in front of you, right elbow over left, bend that left one up and find some connection with the hands, yep. And here we go, let's do that a few times again where we're just gonna fold in, really round and puff up the upper back, chin to the chest, and then go in that opposite range of motion where you're just lifting, lifting, lifting and lengthening, opening up the throat. Good, do that a few more times at your pace. Make sure there's no clenching at the jaw. The jaw is really relaxed here. You can even keep the lips parted and really like have the sense of ease in the mouth and the throat, the tongue is easy in the mouth. Yeah, and then when you come up, you're going to take those circles. And circle the other way. Good. And then just find that kind of 90 degree and pull the shoulders down, reaching the elbows forward, the hands up. Yeah. But we didn't do this on the other side, but just turn your head side to side here. See how that feels. Good. All right. And we're going into the eagle. So left leg lift, crosses over the right thigh, crouch it down, squeeze those inner thighs together. Yeah, like really, really hug tight into the arms, into the legs. Everything's coiling around the center line. Belly pulls in towards the spine. Maybe you do that forward fold here, releasing everything towards the ground. And then with a big burst, coming back up and releasing it all the way out. Doing your little shake and shimmy side to side, whatever feels good. All right, Ooh, that was good. All right, we're gonna do, um, let's do a little bit of bridges, maybe towards a wheel, maybe towards a shoulder stand. We'll see how we do, okay? Your practice, your choice, but let's just play. Okay, so we're gonna start on the ground. And you're gonna come lie onto your back. Feet are kind of close in towards your bottom. Knees are up. Make sure your whole foot is pressing onto the ground, including those big toes especially. Okay, and we're just gonna start with an easy pelvic tilt. So here the head, the neck is completely neutral. Everything is supported. You're just gonna 
kind of do these little, this little range of motion where you're pressing the tailbone down and the low back lifts up a little arch. And then you're going the other way, using your abdominals to pull the tailbone up off the ground, but press the low back down into the ground. Yep, so just moving in that range of motion. You may notice that your neck wants to be involved in that, right? It's like all this stuff is connected. So notice that like where your jaw tries to tense up or your throat tries to grasp, you know, in that motion. See if you could bring some ease there. Good, all right, the next time you are going to press down into the feet and lift the hips up off the ground. And we're just gonna stay there and hang out. So really pushing into the heels, pushing into the big toes, a little bit of strength in those glutes, right? And you're opening up the front of the quads, the hip flexors. Yeah, and notice where the throat is. So naturally, the throat is closing off a little bit here, right? But you don't want it so tight that you can't, like it's, there should be a tiny little bit of space there, right? You should be able to breathe. And think about opening the lungs. So actually, the breath is allowing the spaciousness in the, in the chest and in the lungs. All right, slowly lower, 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 lower. See if you can bring the sacrum down last. So you use your core here to control. Good. And then you lower that sacrum down. <sighs> Take your knees wider. Your feet wider, feet wider, drop your knees together. You can take your arms to the side. Let's just flip flop side to side a few times, open up the outer hips. All right, so now we're gonna do a rolling bridge. And what the rolling bridge is gonna look like is on your inhale, you push down into the feet, you lift the hips and your arms come up overhead. That will definitely close off the throat. You'll feel that, especially with the shoulders overhead. On your exhale, you lower the arms and the hips back down and now your throat is neutral or open again. So just do a few of those, inhaling up, and exhaling down. Oh, all right. Okay, here's an option. I'm going to give options now. You can do more rolling bridges. You can do a bridge hold and maybe play with one leg up or the other leg up if you want to do that. You can do a supported bridge where you come up but place a block under the sacrum at whatever height feels good for you and just rest in that bridge where you're fully supported. And that's just really nice like release of the low back. Or if you would like to play with a wheel, depending on your flexibility, depending on your upper body strength, what that looks like is you do the same starting setup as if you're gonna go into a bridge, but you take your arms overhead, elbows bent, hands to the floor, and with a big, big strong push, you push down into the floor and you lift yourself up. And notice that my throat is wide open in this pose, right? So this is a real neck and throat opener and we're prepared for this. We've prepped a lot in the body to do that. So one of those options, a regular bridge, a bridge with a leg up, a bridge with a supported block, rolling bridges or a wheel pose. So play and I'll watch you guys and see where you're at.
Beautiful. Wherever you are, keep extending your tailbone long and draw the knees towards the midline. Okay, so that you're not over compressing the low back. The low back is lengthening. Beautiful. Nice. So there's a lot of strength involved here, obviously. <laughs> Good. All right. One last pose, and then we'll take it into a shavasana. Okay. So shoulder stand. Some version of shoulder stand. If you're not going into a full shoulder stand, the invitation is to do a supported, well, either an inversion straight on your back. You could do that just to get the inversion legs up to the sky, neck and shoulders and throat completely relaxed here. That's one option. Second option is supported shoulder stand on a block. You're just same thing, but you're just elevating your hips. And there you go. If you want to go to the full shoulder stand, you're basically going to roll your knees in towards your chest, get your hips up off the floor, take your hands to the low back to support those hips, and then you elevate the legs up to the sky. And you'll notice that that is closing off the throat, Jalandhara Bandha. We're basically just pumping a little bit of energy to flush out the thyroid and parathyroid glands in the throat. If you're happy in whatever you're in, stay there. If you wanna take this to what's called Karna Pidasana, which is knees to ears pose, it's a little deeper. So you're dropping the knees towards your ears. All right, so it's, it's going a little deeper. You'll definitely feel the throat constriction, something about the ears, right? That relates to listening listening, hearing, that's the other flip side of the coin of speaking. If you wanna take your feet overhead behind you into a plow pose, you can do that as well. And when you're in poses like these, you do not turn your head and neck side to side. You just really make sure that you're taking proper care of the neck. Whatever pose you're in, you're gonna slowly come back out of that. Ah, take your knees in towards your chest and you can just rock side to side here. Circle. And you can circle the other direction. All right, whatever you need for your final relaxation pose, however you wanna set yourself up or prop, do that. And we'll just take two minutes to rest in silence. And again, you may wanna come back to your offering, your Pesach, right? How do you use your mouth, your speech? or goodness, right? To express love and to be more mindful about abstaining from speech that is harmful.
Gently bring your awareness back to your breath and just stay with mindfulness of your breath. And if there are any prayers you want to offer on behalf of yourself or anyone else in need of some prayer, take your time and do that now. And if there's any gratitude you want to express in your heart and mind, do that now. On your next inhale, bring the arms up overhead, reach through the fingers, reach through the feet. And on an exhale, you can roll over to your side. And slowly make your way up. What's the prayer in the Amida? May the words of my heart and no, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, Adonai. May the words of my mouth and the prayers of my heart, the offerings of my heart be acceptable to you, Adonai. Amen. All right, you guys. I was thinking about that also at the opening of the Amida. Were you? I love yeah, that you were thinking right about that.